Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Tom Wells here. Today is Monday, April 23rd, 2018, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Your first daily dose of happy for the day. Our first daily dose of happy for the week because it's a brand new week. And it's gorgeous weather. We finally are into the gorgeous weather here, Tom. The highs are going to be in the <laughs> upper 60s today. I'm looking outside my window. It is a clear blue sky, not a cloud to be seen. The sun is just kind of like, you know, drenching itself on everything. It is a gorgeous day. What a great way to start the week. Wow. Yeah. I hope you get out there. Oh, you can count on it. I am definitely getting out there. Right in the warmest part of the day when it's just perfect. Mm. Oh, Where do you go? Oh, that's, I'll go walking or I'll biking or, you know, something like mm -hmm. that just to be out for an hour or so. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, in fact, yesterday was really nice as well. And I was out on my walk and I was, you know, it, it was mid-60s. It was blue sky, no clouds, beautiful sun, you know, gentle breezes, just great scents in the air, of course, because it's spring. And I thought to myself, this is my favorite weather pattern. This is the one that I always try to visualize when I want, whenever I want to change the weather. Here it is. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Of course, when I'm trying to influence the weather, I don't actually expect it to shift directly from minus 20 to 65 degrees, but uh, I do use it as my way to improve the weather. And so, you know, it's always useful in that sense. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So how was good. your weekend? Did you have a good one? Yeah, I had a, I had a good one. Um, spent some time with uh, my friend and we, we did some really nice things and, and then yesterday went uh, went to the mountains by myself and hung out in this beautiful meadow. I get off the trail and I walk across a uh, big area to where nobody ever goes, and I sit in this big meadow, and it's just incredible, so beautiful there. And just to let myself be there in that sun, it was 61 degrees, like you say, really great weather with just a light jacket and just so gorgeously beautiful i just i was just in awe i just sort of i just sit there and kind of just let it do its thing on me you know and uh and i was de dealing with some feelings inside that i had to I had to sort of sit with and let those feelings kind of find their way through my body you might say <laughs> into and you know they just transformed into better and better feelings the longer i was out there it's hard not to feel good when you're out in the woods that is true for me <laughs> yeah yeah well especially this time of year because everything is coming alive everything's waking up yeah you know yeah and it was there was lots of grass coming up and all the cactus was all succulent and getting big and before i was out there a few weeks ago and the cactus was desiccated there just wasn't enough moisture but we got a little bit more, and we're going to get a little bit more tomorrow even. So, uh, yeah, beautiful. Very good. Well, we we're kind of carrying on a, a continuation of last week's topic, uh, which was focus wheels, which you introduced me to. I, I didn't really know about focus wheels. As I've been thinking about them over the weekend, I realized, well, it's just kind of a nice way of, of graphically presenting uh, the concept of, well, focus on what you want and then come up with 12 reasons why you like it. But it's a cute concept. And w we were realizing the importance of the feeling aspect. And so that's what made me think, well, why don't we talk more about that today? Because I really believe that is the part that gets the least amount of attention, not just in focus wheels, but in anything that we're doing where we're trying to attract using the law of attraction. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, is, is that your, I mean, we kind of chatted about this about this before the show, and, and your response seemed to be more that, well, it's a great big soup, and there's a whole lot of things to pay attention to. Am <laughs> I reading that right? Well, you know, when you're wanting often to do focus wheels, the way that I understand it is it's you want to move, you want to move your emotion in a way. You know, emotion is moving energy in your body. So you're wanting to move from an energy that might feel not so comfortable to an energy that feels better. And of course, if you put names to it, you could say, well, I'm going to go from feel this feeling of sadness to a feeling of hopefulness, or I'm going to at least move up the emotional scale from something that feels really maybe depressing, you know, to feeling um, just feeling angry. <laughs> um, 
I, I mean, I, I've never heard that. I thing. have a hard, I have a hard time working with that kind of emotional change. I always want to feel better. You know, I want to feel good. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never um, heard that definition before. Energy, motion, emotion. That, that's interesting. Yeah, emotion is energy in motion. Yeah, I've never. I mean, yeah. it, it's a nice little way of remembering what what actually is involved. But I never heard that one before. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Um, so here's the thing about focus wheels: is that they are designed to be something that when you do it, you are making your decisions on uh, how to play the focus wheel game based on finding better feelings in yourself so let's say you write in the center um what was the one that you wrote was about money right yeah yeah and you wanting to have you know you wanting to have a better income or you're you're saying you know you put in the center i want to be able to feel i want to be able to afford anything i want to buy or you put in the center i want to um have money be associated with ease in my life i want i want there to be ease around money whenever i deal with it um you know which is definitely possible to get to that point and uh so then you look at your focus wheel which is like you know as we mentioned on friday it's like it looks like a great big clock you i mean you take a piece of paper you draw a big outer circle say say you have an eight and a half by eleven sheet in a notebook and you draw a big outer circle around the perimeter of the page, and then you draw a smaller circle in the center that's maybe just three or four inches across. And then at each of the points on uh, would be on a, on a clock, as if the big circle was a clock, you draw a little mark. So you got one at 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You've got a, a, a mark there. And then starting at the 12 o'clock point, you think of a thought, that is in alignment with the thing that you want that you say you want in the center so if you're saying in the center i want to have freedom around i want to be financially independent and at ease with money and then at 12 o'clock what would you put so it's different for each person how you're going to play the game but the way you play it is you look for something that feels better that really you can relate to that seems realistic to you that if when you put it in the 12 o'clock spot it relieves some of the angst that you have around because you know you often do a focus wheel because you're feeling that you don't have the money that you want you're feeling backed up about the fact that i want to have more money maybe you've been trying to get more money for months and years um, and so you're feeling maybe you're in debt maybe you're you know, somehow you're just feeling that money's difficult. So then you think, okay, so what can I put at 12 that would make me feel a little bit better towards this f- idea I have of wanting to be independently wealthy? And so you might put, um, I think this game can help me. <laughs> you know, maybe that's the first thing. You feel some relief. You feel like this doing focus wheels can help you. And then at one o'clock, you might put, um, well, I have had, I've had money before. I know how good it feels to have money. And that makes you feel a little bit better. And at two o'clock you might put, um, I'm doing a lot to, to increase my income right now. So that makes you feel a little bit better. So it just goes around the circle like that. You, each time you, you think of something that, you know, that's more hopeful, that's more, in the direction of where you want to go. So it's sort of you're turning your boat downstream, as Abraham puts it. You're going with the flow of your life a little bit more with each thing you put onto your 12, those 12 positions. And the idea is as you, as by the time you finish it, it, you're in a more relaxed, you're in a more relieved, you're in a more easy position. And you realize that you just transform from feeling pretty, upset and maybe freaked out about not having enough money to feeling pretty hopeful and pretty expectant that things are going to work out one way or the other, that things are going to be better. It's always a good thing. The, no, the, <laughs> the thing that, it, well, it is. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, I know it is. <laughs> it's always a good thing. That's why I laugh because it's like, well, yeah. Of course, right. <laughs> well, I, I'm known for stating the obvious. It's one of my good things to do. No, it's a good thing, yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, the, the thing that strikes me about the whole process, and it 
we can relate this to every process that Abraham teaches, I believe, and indeed to processes that other you know teachers teach. The importance of putting the emotion into it. I mean, when when we were doing the exercise on Friday, you you mm-hmm. asked me to, to actually start doing the circle, right? And so mm-hmm. you, you had me write the uh, the the main goal in the center, and then at one o'clock you had me write my first statement about what it was that uh, you know would kind of get me into that place and, and would contribute to it and have a very positive downstream feel mm-hmm. to it. And then you said, now really feel it. And, and well, the hardest part was coming up with it. And then I came up with it. And now I'm supposed to feel it. And, and I was amazed how much resistance I had to feeling it now that I just finally come up with this thing. It, it felt like it had been an effort the first time to come up with the first one. And, uh-huh. then, and then we go to the second one. And of course, it's, you know, we're doing it quickly because we're doing it on the radio show, right? So um, we, we're going right to the second one, and, and I'm still kind of back on the first one because I'm emotionally becoming <laughs> untangled from that one. You say, well, come up with the second one. Oh, okay, so I'm, I'm writing the second one down, and okay, now feel that one too. Oh, it's, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm being, you know, and, and I'm not saying that you're doing this. I'm just saying this is me. I'm, I'm feeling myself like being pushed around and, and trying to, uh, oh, my God, i got to feel this thing too. I mean, I guess what I'm saying is we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, and I think what ultimately happens is very often we say, I'm just going to skip that part. It's too much. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing we can't do. We must stay there. We've got to get that emotion going because the emotion is is basically the the accelerant. It's the thing that really, you know, gets that vibration up to speed. It's the thing that, that, that gets the intention out there in a big, powerful way. Because, well, like, I, like I was yeah. saying with somebody I was com- communicating with on Facebook over the weekend, you, I mean, she made the point that there is power in words. And I said, well, that's true, but it's only partly true because it's not the words themselves. It's also the emotion that goes with it. And we agreed that ultimately words are really just containers. They, they're containers. They're like boxes that hold the actual power in sel- itself inside of them. But they're not the power. The power is inside the word, and it's it's the association and the emotion that we have attached to it. And so we can throw words around all we want to, like, well, I think that this and I think that that. And, you know, it's a downstream thought. But if we don't put the emotion behind it, we're only we're, – we're giving ourselves short shrift, I think. Yeah. I mean, if if it's true that – we are all creatures of vibration and i believe it is that and what we vibrate with is determines what then is attracted into our life and we were talking about how when you do a focus wheel the real essence of it is the vibration that you're feeling so you're you know it's i can see how you could have felt you know that all that pressure to not only come up with a better feeling words but come up with a better feeling (laughs) Um, but the thing the thing is is that when i've done focus wheels for example i i really ask myself am i feeling an emotional shift when i say that you know when i say that thing that i'm going to put on the focus wheel is it coming out of the fact that it brings me some relief when i say that thing and that's that's of course the feeling that i'm looking for a lot is a feeling of relief a feeling of more ease, a feeling of more possibility, a feeling of more hopefulness, a feeling that I'm going in a direction that is giving me more sense of freedom, you know, more sense of openness, possibility. Mm -hmm. And so I don't write something on it unless I feel that sense of something is changing in me. Um, you know, that's why Abraham compares the folk doing focus wheels to getting on a merry-go-round that's already spinning really fast. And it, what they're saying that, that what's spinning fast is your thoughts about uh, your thoughts and feelings about where you're at. And so that's why you're backed up. That's why a person gets backed up because they were, you know, I guess they're thinking and they're feeling, you know, a certain way. And if they want to change that, they have to sometimes slow that momentum down. So that's, you know, slowing the merry-go-round down so you can get on it and then speed it back up again. And um, so as you come up with these statements, the indication to get on that merry-go-round is does it does the thing that you're writing on the focus wheel feel, do you feel better when you say it? Does it feel like a possibility? Does it feel hopeful? Um, so if you write that thing in the first it is, I think it is hardest to write the first one, mm. you know, um, or even to come off, like you said, 
on Friday to come up with the thing that's in the center. Right. You know, so we yeah, could do true. one again and, and practice it. Yeah, we could do that. That'd be a good idea. Um, I have one little request I need you to do. I need you to back off on your microphone just a little bit because every once in a while oh, your okay. breath is hitting the diaphragm and we, we oh, got to get rid of that okay. little bit of breathy right, sound. I did. I because, just moved it. Yeah. I know you weren't doing it intentionally. How would you know? You can't hear it. <laughs> yeah, I can't hear it. I can't hear it. And I'm glad you told me. Yeah. Because I never, I never know. How would you know otherwise? So how good it's sounding. But yeah, we can bad. do uh we 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 can do another one and try to work on it. I I'm interested in what you said though. You get yourself in the feeling place before you even come up with a thought. That's what it sounded like you said. Well, I no, I I uh I ask myself what thing if I if I write something on the focus wheel, a thought that comes up to me about that thing in the center, does it does do I feel relief when I say it? Oh, as you know, you're because, saying the words. You know, it's so easy for me to be intellectual about something <laughs> and intellectual, oh. like you were saying. I mean, words don't teach, as Abraham says so often. It's, you know, what teaches is direct experience. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm having, if I'm doing this focus wheel and I have a direct experience from writing something in one of the positions, that's, then that thing sticks. You know, they, when they talk about creating focus wheels, the whole thing that they're working on is, does does the thing you say really give you a sense, a feeling that you're headed in the right direction that you want to go? Are you turning your boat downstream by saying that thing? Is it is it a more downstream thought or is it a more upstream thought, which makes you feel more backed up when you write it? Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes when we're backed up emotionally, even the things that we want to say about where we're at aren't actually going to get us to be start headed in a direction that feels better. And so you're doing a focus wheel to get yourself headed in a direction that feels better. So the things that you write, I, you got to ask yourself, does this feel better when I write this in there? That's why if we practice one, we can get a better example of how that goes. All right. Well, um, we can do that because I, I do want to see. I I, I I want to really nail down what the step by step is and and you know what what order you do things in so that I can try to replicate that. Mm -hmm. So do you want to do one? Do you have yeah. a, something you want to put in the oh, center? Oh, that's right. I need to have a topic, don't I? Um, let's see. What will my topic be? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I want. Well, okay. I'm a weather person, right? And I normally do this by uh, you know, focusing on my ideal day in the face of whatever it is I'm trying to change. But I want to have a different kind of intention. I want to set the intention that this summer will be a relatively cool and dry summer because we get awful hot and humid summers here. Mm. And you know, it's so much nicer when you go outside, it's like, ah, oh, that feels so good and stuff. Oh God, it's so oppressive, you know? So mm. I, I want to... I want to attract a, a summer that is just a nice, comfortable and dry and, you know, not cold, but a, but not a brutally hot summer. Something that's just very comfortable and enjoyable so that every day that we're outside, it's like, oh, wow, what a great summer we're having. Now, I'm not mm. sure how to phrase that in, in four words, but I got to find a way to do that. So um, I, I want to have a, a a temperate summer. How's that? Okay, well, it's got to just, the thing you put there is like, how does it feel when you say it? Okay. So let's see. I mean, I want does, to that, have... does that feel pretty good? Is that something you can get excited about? Something you can, you can feel and, you know, that it's, you, that it raises your vibration to what the vibration that you want to bring to your summer? So not so much the words, the feeling. And yeah, I mean, a temperate summer, well, that, that yeah. has a very definite feeling to it. That that has the feeling of that kind of you walk out the door and it feels good. That's that to me is a temperate summer. All right. So do you have a circle that you drew? Yep. So I'm I'm writing okay. right now, having a temperate summer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then I have to go to the one o'clock position, right? No, go to the twelve o'clock position. Oh, twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock first. Okay. And, and what would you write there is a small sentence or, a, you know, like a phrases that that give you the sense that you're headed in the direction that you want to go. OK, so, well, first of all, my ideal summer's day is the temperature in the mid 70s, um, dry without being uh, desert dry. 
you know, t moderately dry. Um, blue sky, sun, gentle breeze. I don't know how to shorten that, but that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't, I don't know if I've done a focus wheel on something like this. This is pretty different. Like yeah. I mean, well, yeah. I think I'm actually going to do it as a list because it's easier than trying to fit it into a little pie slice. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to write down as a list. So for, for the 12 o'clock position, um, my ideal day is I'm going to write down the different characteristics. So the temperature range, blue sky, sun, gentle breeze. And we'll call it moderate humidity. Okay, so there's there's my first item. Okay, that's your first item. That's my that's so my, how, my twelve o'clock, so to speak. Yeah. So so does that get feeling going inside of you? Well, yeah, that one always does because that's the one that I always use to visualize when I'm trying to change a severe weather weather situation. And so that one's my go to. That's the one I I love. You know, this idea of this just nice temperate situation and oh it feels so good my mm -hmm. favorite way to go walk my favorite way to go ride a bike my favorite way just to go out and do stuff mm -hmm. yep does it lead you to another statement does it lead me to another statement uh does it lead you do, does it open now that you've opened this door to this feeling of having the thing you want in the center is does it does something else open up and come to you that that is more even more leading you in that downstream motion towards flowing into the direction that you want to go with your life? Well, yeah, I want it every day. I mean, every day, you know, in fact, the only time that I want it to rain is like late in the afternoon, early evening when I'm already, you know, done for the day and they can get the rain done so that we can have the moisture, but not while well, I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> you mm -hmm. see, I'm real particular about my weather patterns. <laughs> so what comes up around when you, so what, what's the next statement that you might make? Um, I want this pattern every day. That's, that's the simplest way to put it. And does that give you a sense of feeling good? Oh yeah. Feeling better. <laughs> I right. like that one a lot. So maybe that's your one o'clock statement. So I'm writing it down. Uh huh. Yeah, see, I use I use the thing of does it does this make me feel like I'm headed in the direction of that thing in the center, like I'm really okay. going to be moving now, more earnestly, more um, excitedly, more eagerly, more anticipation that I will that I am going to go towards the thing in the center that I put there, and that I am going there in the in that direction just by the thing that I write. It 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 uplifts me to to write that thing. All right, so that takes me actually to my, my 2 o'clock, which is we need rain, so the rain can fall during the evening hours or even overnight. Oh, I see. Or <laughs> overnight. Because that way we get the rain, but I can still enjoy my beautiful days. Okay. And, yeah, I like that one a lot. Louise likes that one a lot, too, for her gardening business. Because the best thing that can happen for them is to have the overnight rain so that all the plants that they're tending to get their moisture. And then when they go to do their weeding, the weeds come right out, no problem, you know, because they're doing all that in the morning. So, yeah, overnight rain is ideal for her business. All right. So let's see. I have to go to a number three next. Uh-huh. Let's see. Now, where does that take me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes maybe it is only a few. Like in this sort of case, I don't know what all you know. Usually, it's like if if something's coming up right now that is it, well, that actually it's feeling does. resistance. You know, then you could say, well, what would be the opposite of the resistance I'm feeling? Well, it does come up now. Now that I'm or what would with be a bit. small step in the direction? Well, of what it. For more more for it is is what the benefit is. Like when mm -hmm. the weather is the way I want it to be then I can do more biking and walking and activities outside. Mm -hmm. So that gets you more excited. Yeah. So I'll write that down. When the weather's that way. I can bike. 
the walk and do other fun things outside. Yeah, because that's the whole point. That's why I want to have the weather like that. I don't want to just look at it out the window. That's not nearly as good. You got to be out there, right? You got to be out there yeah. and enjoying it. <laughs> Otherwise, why bother asking for it? <laughs> That's why I live in Colorado. We have 300, and, what, 300 days of sunshine a year. Is know? that right? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Very good. It's fine until until you feel like you're in a drought. <laughs> well, then, there is know, that. See, that's why then, that's why I specified the overnight rain. You get the overnight rain. Now that's what I I should be specifying. <laughs> yeah, more you should. That, yeah. but why aren't you doing this color wheel or this uh, focus wheel too? You should be doing it as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm kind of doing this with you. Oh, I mean, you are? I'm, okay. I'm I'm in your I'm I'm trying to be here with you. So listen and see how's it going for you. So is this working for you? Is this opening up? a sense of anticipation that yeah that i think so more excited i think so I, um it's also more accurately just by staying focused on it, it's feeling better i feel happier mm. Mm. which mm -hmm. i know is really that that's your 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 clue right that's that's your cue that yeah. you're, you're on the right track because when you're feeling happier that's higher vibration and when you mm -hmm. have the higher vibration that's when you're allowing in Anything that changes the vibration, it doesn't always have to be happiness. It could just be a better feeling than you were having. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. It, as long as it's better. Just a relief of. So, I mean, sometimes people will do this just to relieve a pressure around something that feels really intense for them. Mm. Whether they or not it's related it. to the thing that they're asking for. Um. Well, no, it'll, of course, it'll be related to what they oh, put in okay. there. Okay. Okay. In their focus wheel. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, you know, I'm just saying that I've seen it done where somebody say they're in severe debt and they don't see a way out of that severe debt, but they put in the center, you know, I want to be debt free. And then they start around the circle and it takes a bit of, you know, effort for them to come up with statements that f help them feel better about their debt situation because maybe it's been really oppressive and overriding so many things in their life is this huge concern they have about the fact that they're a hundred thousand dollars in debt or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so each thing that they write on the circle is a, is a ideally a relief of some of that pressure, but it might be just a really simple statement. Like, um, you know, we, we've been making our payments on time, at least we we at least we make our payments on time you know mm -hmm. or it might you know be like uh we uh we've or if we've asked for an, another uh line of credit with you know that other bank and we were it looks like we're going to be able to get it mm -hmm. uh, but even though that doesn't completely get rid of their debt overnight it's right. a step in the in that direction and there is some relief there and mm -hmm. if they start looking at the whole situation and find relief here and relief there you know they could even put something on the circle like i um i've i've found that i feel better i feel better when i go outside for a walk i mean that might be something that i would put on the circle because it's it's some relief you mm -hmm. know so that's really the the key word where the emotion is concerned relief if you're feeling it relief. is a big part of it for me yeah i mean and for clients i've worked with i find that that relief is is often the thing that then opens the door to us seeing our life in a in a more positive oriented way. We start seeing possibilities when we right. feel that we can give ourselves a break. Yeah. Well, we do. We we need to give ourselves a break. No doubt about that in my mind. Um because we are our own worst enemies in in one sense because we're so hard on ourselves. So giving ourselves a break is actually a really good thing to do. It not only gives ourselves a break, but it also helps with the relief thing and helps build the emotion up to the high levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really, that's really why important. I went to the mountains yesterday. That was like a relief move because was. I was feeling okay. some pressure around some things in my life and feeling like I had to I had to just go and sit with myself to feel more ease. And, you know, thus that's more relief, you know, and once I'm out there, then I can give myself permission to to not feel like I'm totally boxed in by my thinking. Understandable. Yeah. Uh, I also, I, I guess probably I picked the topic that was 
a low resistance topic for me. And maybe I should have picked one that was a higher resistance topic so that we could illustrate these marginal improvement steps that you're talking about. Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, that's why, in a way, you were doing a focus wheel on something that is almost like, well, how can I gain momentum around this idea that I already feel um, is a good possibility or, or something that I don't have a lot of angst about it? Because if, if you didn't get the weather exactly the way you want it, you wouldn't necessarily be angst-ridden by that. Um, yeah, right. It's not like, like it's somebody who, who's got a big debt and if if they don't make a payment, you know, they're going to have to declare bankruptcy. You know, that's a little more intense, you know. <laughs> right, yeah. For some people. So let's see. I wonder, maybe so, I should just stop this this uh, focus wheel and, and change to one that's more more poignant, shall we say. Um, okay. Let's see. So I need a new page here. All right. So this is the new focus wheel. What are we going to do this one on? Um, okay. Well, there's one that uh, my wife and I, as I think I have mentioned to you, I've know, I know I've mentioned it on the show uh, with a lot of the co-hosts. We've done a lot of open house looking, and we've been doing it with the idea of trying to just go for, you know, look look at houses that are way out of our price range so that we can raise our vibration up about, you know, how exciting it would be to have a really, really nice house like that. And uh-huh. not, not with the intention of buying anything. But in the process, we did find one that we liked. Um, actually, not one of the most expensive ones, interestingly enough. But it, it is, it's fairly expensive and certainly outside of our price range. And it's mm-hmm. one we, we would really like to have because, uh, among other things, uh, she has friends who live right next door. So we'd be living next door to her friends. Um, it's got all the space we need, not only for us, but also for the gardening business. We could actually have the business in-house in a separate part of the house that employees could access. So it's got a lot of really nice features that we like. That's just Mm -hmm. one of them. Um, And the fact is it's outside of the price range. So the angst is, well, you know, Louise wants to attract us. She wants to attract it within the next month, even though right now, if you looked at our finances, you'd say we don't have a prayer of acquiring it. Uh So it's a bit of a reach. It's actually, it's a lot of a reach, but I, I don't know how much angst is there associated with it. I'm not sure if there's angst associated with it, but, I, I guess the angst is that we're reaching really far. We're really stretching our belief to to try to even go for something like that. Does that qualify? Do you think? I would think you could do a focus wheel around that. Okay. Um, you could put what. So, what would you want in the center as your statement of? Uh, oh, we want to acquire the, the thing that you want. Yeah, we want to acquire the house at Woodley Road. Yeah, because that has a very definite association with it. Well, first of all, what is it that you don't want? What what we don't want? Oh, we don't mm. want to stay in the current apartment. <laughs> okay. We're in an okay. apartment right now where we're just you know we 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 definitely need to move out. No doart about it. Uh-huh. I mean that the department has served its purpose, but no, the, we we we're expanding too fast. We have a lot of need for a lot more space, and we want to own rather than rent. So so do you want to put in the center? We want the house at. Where, where did you say Woodley Road? Or? Woodley is the name of it. Yeah, Wood, Woodley. Woodley Road. You, yeah, that's. You what want we, to put that in the center? Yep. Okay. All right, so I'll write that right now. So we want the house at Woodley Road. Woodley has an interesting spelling too. W o o d l e i g h. Oh, kind of, okay. Kind of a you know, pretty sound to it. So yeah. okay, we want the house at Woodley Road. So I go first to twelve o'clock. Mm-hmm. And at 12 o'clock, okay, so these again are, if, well, if, if I'm talking about it, we're, we're, we were talking about trying to do this from uh, you know, the more negative position and trying to move it to the more positive position. So, yeah, so, you know, that's why I was asking what you don't want, because right. how many times does your head say a statement, something about having a new place or, or this place? that how many times does your head say something that is not going to help you ever get it? Yeah. Well, you know? I mean, the obvious one is it's, it's outside of our price range. We, right. we, we Looking at our finances right now, we can't afford it. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's definitely an upstream thought. <laughs> that's yeah, about as upstream and, as they get. Yeah. And so start thinking of a, of a downstream thought that, and, and a feeling, you know, like, like if, Ask yourself if you say a certain thought, if it gives you a feeling, a possibility, and hope, or relief of the fact that you think you can't afford it. 
Well, we do know from prior experience with other things that we've attracted in our lives that it's very possible within uh, situations that it seems like there's no way it can happen. It's very possible for it to happen because we've experienced that. We've experienced mm -hmm. things that couldn't happen actually happening. Well, maybe that's your first one. Okay. So, so you could put, we've experienced it actually happening when we thought it couldn't. But we've experienced things happen things that we happening. didn't think could happen. Right. Didn't think could happen. And you might want to do this as I statements. I don't know if you want to do we statements. I've never done one with we statements. <laughs> oh, I think I, mean, of if the, I, I think of it because it's Louise and I together. I mean, yeah. For for me, thinking of us doing it together is a very positive thing. So that's why I do that. And plus, it's ours. It's not something. It's not like going to be my house. Although I have to say, there are times when she says it'll be her house. <laughs> 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 but I tend to. Well, stick maybe with that's one of your one of your relief points around this is that you could put. You know, we are doing that doing this with Louise. I feel hopeful. That's true. Um, that is very true. Okay, I will include that. So my one o'clock is, I feel more hopeful, hopeful, doing this with Louise, mm -hmm. which is very true. That does feel better. So, so what what comes up when you when you think right now about this having this thing in the center? Like, is it what's what thought? like comes up at all whether oh. it's a relief thought or not well the first one that comes to my mind it, it actually doesn't directly impact me but it but it does i just know how much she would love to have her friends and her friends kids living next door and i'd love that for her that i mean that alone feels good because mm. i know she how much she wants that mm -hmm. maybe that's one you should put then because that's what comes up and you have right. you have emotion around that yeah so, so you, that's the emotional thing. That's right. Yeah. Okay. You got excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought you were going to maybe say something of you know that comes up about how impossible this all seems, and then we could fashion one that's you know a step in the direction. Well, let's do that. With, you let's came do up that with, with one that that is an an inspiring reason to have this house. Yeah. Well, we still haven't really gotten to. The, the main thing, which is the concerns, the fears about how do you pay for it? How do you get it? You know, right now we can't afford it. Where's the money going to come from? So maybe that and, needs and to be I part wonder, of the three o'clock. Pardon? Maybe that needs to be part of the three o'clock. I don't know. You know, it, like, because I thought it was cool that you came up with something that, that is a vibration that is associated with having this house that brought you to a higher vibration. And mm -hmm. that's what you want. True. You want ones that just bring you to a higher vibration. They don't have to directly address money. Okay. You know, I mean, but if you need them to, you know. Well, I think I do then, on some level. Because, I mean, the, the, this is a real stretch, this house. I mean, this yeah, is, a, this is yeah. such a big stretch that it would require a significant change in our financial situation right now, like over the next 30 days in order to pull yeah. this off. Yeah. So, and that, I, I mean, financial has always been a big bugaboo in my life. Um, mm -hmm. It held me down in my most depressed period of time more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And while I've made a lot of progress in terms of getting myself feeling happier, uh, you know, using a lot of different modalities and processes, it's still in the background. I mean, sure. I still feel it. Sure. I don't feel it nearly like I used to. I don't have the negative self-talk about it like I used to. That mirror exercise really did a great job of getting rid of that. But uh, it's still there. It's And I, I think it would be unrealistic to have it not be there, you know, for as long as it's been there. <laughs> and for what, I'm, <clears throat> for what I'm trying to reach for, I'd be surprised if it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But you did say something just now that indicated that you created some relief around the mirror work. Oh, yeah. And, and so you might... You might think of a statement for the three o'clock position that has something to do with with the relief that you are have already created some in your life. Okay. Um, well, 
I'm glad well, what that comes to you? Like, just what's the next thing on your circle? I always look at it like, well, just what's what's some statement that get keeps this momentum going that I've already established? Like, I look at the first three, first two things I've written, or you've written three now, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And and so what what sort of naturally f- comes to you next that is uh, uplifting to you? Well, I'm I'm hopeful. really glad I've been doing that mirror work because it has provided relief on one of the biggest resistance points I have. And that resistance point is now a lot less than it would have been even six months ago, let alone five years ago. Yeah. So that sounds like a pretty powerful point. Yeah, it is. That you say, I have created great relief already around money, you know, or something like that. Yeah. How, 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 How do you want to word that? Um, I like that first part and I'm going to add to it using the mirror exercises. Okay. Mirror exercises. Good thing nobody else has to read this. They wouldn't be able to read a word of it. (laughs) Yeah. Sometimes when you write around the circle like that. Well, I'm not even writing it around the circle. I'm writing it in in a list. It's just, it's just that my handwriting is notoriously terrible and even I have trouble reading it. I can uh-huh. read it, but you know, I have, sometimes I have to say, "Okay, what was that word?" <laughs> <laughs> I do that too. There, there are doctors who you know take lessons from me on how to write badly when they write their prescriptions. Oh, that's good. Yeah, well, yeah. at least you got a way to make <laughs> got a way to make money there, that's teaching right. doctors how to write bad. I could do that too. Yeah, that's, that's quite a skill. <laughs> it's quite a skill. It's hard to get a good price for it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. You advertise on Craigslist. <laughs> I love that. I'll teach doctors how to write <laughs> how bad. to write bad bad handwriting on the prescriptions. <laughs> <laughs> how much would you charge for that? No, never mind. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> plenty, plenty. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I got to be plenty. able to afford that house. <laughs> That's right. So, so what do you want to write in the fourth position now that you've written that you're? Look at the other ones you've written. What What have you written so far? Okay. Um, We have experienced things like this kind of big change happening before, things that we didn't think could happen. Um, I feel more hopeful doing this with Louise. Mm -hmm. I know that Louise would love having her friends next door. And I have, let's see how to write this. Okay, this is one of those situations. Oh, yes, I have created relief around money using the mirror exercise cases. So this is my fourth step so far. Mm Mm-hmm. What's another exciting thing around this um, situation? Okay. Another so let's possibility see what or well, something that feels good that you feel is downstream for a, you. A big downstream thought is knowing that this house is it, – it's a really big house, Tom. It's like 5,000 square feet for two people. Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, it's gigantic. Well. And there's a large chunk of it that would normally be used as like a – Oh, like an au pair apartment or a mother-in-law apartment or something like that. And that's the spot, the space that we thought of using for um, housing the offices of the gardening business so that everything could be right there at the home, but it has a strong divider between the two. So employees Mm -hmm. could come through like a a door outside that that just accesses that section. They don't have to bother us in the house, but Mm -hmm. we could just, you know, like walk down the hall to get to the office. That's like a really nice combination for us. So having the, the the business in the house, but in a separate part of the house, is a is a big plus. Yeah. So maybe you want to write that. All right. Because do you feel excitement around that? Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. that's a good one. I mean, cuts down on the commute, <laughs> and mm-hmm. it well, it also kind of saves money in a sense too, because right now we're renting office space and we won't have to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. So housing the business. Or having the business in the house would be really great. And I guess part of that is with the employees having their own access to that part so they don't have to bug us. So I'll write that too. Okay. Having their own access. Okay. All right. So we're up to four o'clock. We got five positions filled. Moving right mm-hmm. along here. Uh huh. So, is there something else that All leads right. towards you having this house that you can put on there that it's inspiring to you, or that is 
at least uh, an improvement in the way that, you know, the, your doubting part, you know. Well, I'm not sure if I can wait, if I can measure it that way. I mean, I, I don't maybe know. Just, I, just that it makes you feel better. Yeah. I'm not sure if I can figure out, does it help with my doubting part until after I felt it? <laughs> I'm never really good at that. You know, once I feel it, then I know. Trying to anticipate beforehand, I'm not always so good at that. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah. I mean, what's the number one thing in real estate? Location, location, location. The location for this house is fantastic. It's really good. It's right, it's right near everything. Everything that we mm-hmm. want to have it near. It's it's uh, actually closer to the center of town than we are right now. It's right near the walking path that I like to use, the bike path. Um, it's near a, a, a state park. It has, you know, the, the feel of being in the country when you're actually in a, in a suburban area. Um, it's wow. nice. It's got a lot of really good pieces to it. Mm. It's it, it just has, I mean, I'll, I'll just write down that the, the location is great. Because that really summarizes it. Okay. And this is a town that we want to stay in. All the towns in New England are very closely uh, spaced to each other. Because New England, you know, it's a fairly small um, real estate area, or, you know, regional size compared to other regions around the country. I mean, you could probably fit New England into Colorado. <laughs> uh-huh. Wow. You know. and Yeah, so, probably. So everything, and, and there's a lot of towns, but... It's one thing that we noticed a lot when we lived in Virginia. In Virginia, Virginia is a little bit more open space like uh, Colorado is. And, you know, it can take you half an hour to get to the next town. You know, in a half hour in Connecticut, you can pass through five towns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's just the nature of it. So mm-hmm. there are a lot of towns in this in this immediate area that we like. But we love this particular town because this one town, Simsbury, has so much that goes on in it that we, it, it just, it's like the place to be as far as we're concerned. Um, my wife really loves to do like, you know, craft shows and, and, you know, fairs of various kinds. Um, we have the, uh, the Hartford Symphony comes to our town during the summer, um, down to where one of the main soccer fields are. And there's a bandstand, a band shell there. And, uh, you know, they, they, they do you know, a number of concerts throughout the summer. Um, I mean, there, there are just so many things like that that go on right here in our town. So that's why we really want to stay. Well, I in particular want to stay in Simsbury. I think Louise is a little bit more open to checking out some of the other towns. But uh, I would really love to stay in Simsbury. So that, that's a big thing for me. So you're going to put it down? It's down. The location is great. That's I want to stay in Sim- Simsbury. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. In fact, I'll write in that last part. I want to stay in Simsbury. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're at 5 o'clock. Okay. Now 6 What's another downstream thought? Ah, what's another downstream and, thought? And there's a, that gives you a feeling of possibility or relief or excitement or well, one hopefulness. Of the, one or... of the really nice things about this house is that it, it's it's a house that was you know, I don't even, I don't even know what style to describe it. It's it's like halfway between a colonial and a cape, but. Um, it, it's also a house that started as, as a certain size house, and then it's been expanded and added on to a number of times. So the overall shape of the house is kind of like a J, um, with the long part of the, the stem going up on the left-hand side of the J being the part that goes over a three-car garage, and that's the section of the house where we would um, house the business. Mm-hmm. Um, the, if you look, if you think in, in terms of the inside crook of the J, that part of the house is actually a screened porch that looks out on the backyard, and it's gorgeous. Uh, uh, it's it's almost an all weather porch. It, it could be all weather if you provide a way to um, you know block the screens and so forth during the winter, um, and mm-hmm. maybe put glass up so that you know you can use solar warming to to warm the thing. But I mean, it is beautiful. It's a it is just a beautiful porch, and it be it's not it, calling it a porch is actually doing it a disservice. It's a it's, a, it's almost a, a full-size room and, and a very large one at that and room for outside to put a grill out there. So, I mean, I can just imagine us taking our meals out there, particularly in the warm months, and just enjoying nature because you, you get a beautiful view of uh, the woods around you. And, oh, it's it's just really, really pretty. So uh, that that uh, screen and porch is beautiful. That's a, that's a good part of it. Hmm. You want to put that on your circle? Yep, I am doing that right now. Screen and porch is beautiful all right so here's my six o'clock so and i just want to take a moment to to stop and say now i think i understand what you mean you 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 come up with the idea 
You ask, how does that feel? Does it feel really good to you? And then if it does feel good, then you write it down. Yeah, that's what I do. I mean, I, I look at also, you know, what resistances are coming up in me or what excitements are coming up in me. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, you want to vibrate with the thing that that is going in the direction of the thing that you want, you know. And so what we vibrate with is what we get more of. In a way, what you're doing is you're doing these 17 seconds of of getting a vibration going. And then the next thought comes based on the vibration that you get going as you're doing the circle. So you're creating this vibration the way I feel with you is you're cre creating a vibration of the reasons that having this house in this location is really exciting to you. Mm -hmm. And you're building that, you know, instead of, instead of, you know, because if the thought continually comes up like this is impossible, then you, then you're back to square one, but you're building you're building a possibility loop here of reasons for you to stay in this vibration of having this house. Sort of like, you know, you're, you're having the house before you own it. You're having the feeling of having it by creating this focus wheel. You're, you're focusing on what it feels like to have it already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and why you want it so much. And, and that's really cool. I, I think that's great that you've gone down that road of like, well, you know, this is why we want it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, and that uh, you mentioned the 17 second thing and I'm noticing uh, we, we've been working on this one now for about a half an hour. So we're long <laughs> past 17 seconds for each one of these, e each one of these, I would say, well, we've talked about them too, but each one of them, we probably spent, you know, three or four minutes on, which mm -hmm. has got to be really, really powerful. You know, putting that much positive attention onto the thing has to produce some really positive results. Yeah, I think I think you're really onto something because if you if you focus on it consistently, like if if you did a focus wheel every day on that house and the things good about it and you could stay in that vibration, how could you not end up with a really awesome house? It might mm -hmm. not be that exact house. It might not be, no. But you but you might end but you'll end up with something that is coming out of the vibration that you're cultivating because yep. you're cultivating a focus and a vibration and you're believing in it so strongly. Just like you said, with the weather, you know, if you, if you really believe that you want days like that during the summer, you're going to have days like that. It's really likely because you're vib if you vibrate it with really strongly with that, or you're certainly going to notice the good days a lot and take advantage of them. And the same with the house. If you, if you write, all these things that are exciting about it on your focus wheel, there's a really good chance that it'll become dominant in your vibration. I agree that it is the most important part, how you feel about it when you're trying to do um, weather attraction or anything else. Uh, because I, I, like I said, I've never managed to be in the middle of a winter snowstorm and turn it into a 70 degree blue sky day. But yeah. just by focusing on the 20, 70 degree blue sky day, I've been able to influence shifts in the weather for the better um mm -hmm. i uh, the the stories that i've written for the book about actual events that happened include situations like there's one story that i tell where a, a ma major microburst which is like a, a yeah. near tornado was coming through our town and actually was coming right through where our house was i think i've told this one before on the show and mm -hmm. using the method that i've described I was able, and, and I got word about it like five minutes before it arrived. I mean, I was looking at AccuWeather, and I saw this this major storm cell was coming right at our house. I zoomed in to make sure, yep, it's coming right at their house. I said, Louise, Louise, we got to do our thing with the weather. And so we did the thing, and then I walked outside to see what happened. And all around us, I could see you know the dark clouds and the winds blowing the trees, you know, like whipping them around like there's a hurricane. And then right above us, there was a little patch of blue sky. I'm thinking, this is cool. <laughs> did, did, now, did yeah. I get rid of the microburst? No, but I got rid of it where we were. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. whoa, that, that's that's damn good. Now, m maybe, I don't know, if I had stuck with that th thought process, could I have brought it up to a complete 70-degree day? I don't know. Maybe that is possible. All I know is I was able to influence it enough to protect our home where we were, and that's all I really wanted at the moment. Yeah, I don't know what all is possible. There's definitely weather shaman all over the world who who affect the weather, from what I can tell, and I've heard an awful lot of stories, and like I was probably saying it on a previous podcast that um, apparently Hannibal back in the days when Hannibal crossed the Alps and mm -hmm. 
and all those all the fighting going on back then that they they that the different armies would carry weather shaman with them really they would take yeah they would have these guys that would go ahead so that if they crossed the pass and then they wanted to cover the pass with you know five feet of snow so that their army the other <laughs> army couldn't pursue them across the pass that have the weather shaman work the magic of bringing the, the snow and <clears throat> this is apparently in the literature of the time you know there's wow. descriptions of how these guys would do this and uh I don't know. I haven't researched it myself, so I'm just I'm totally saying that based on what a teacher taught me. He told a shaman taught to, told me that this was true, um, and he studies this stuff extensively. Well, I certainly don't want to do this because I want to go uh, murder, rape, and pillage. But I do like being able to influence it so that I can have nice weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, but- well, we got about four minutes left. I don't think we're going to get all of the 12 positions no. done, but, but but this has been a good start. And I like the way that we focused on the emotional component because, well, personally, it gave me the experience directly of feeling it, but also vicariously, it gives our audience the idea that, you know, maybe they can do the same kind of thing with whatever it is they're trying to attract into their lives. And and really, there's no limit to how many of these focus wheels you can do, is there? I mean, it's, it, you can do one for every single thing you could possibly want. Yeah, yeah, you can do them for all kinds of things. And you could do them more than once a day if you wanted to. It just depends on how much it actually inspires you when you start writing the things around the edge that you're hopeful or that are that are a step in the direction that you want to go towards the thing in the center that you put there. Do you find that you it's know? actually worthwhile doing multiple focus wheels on the same topic? I have, but I usually don't because usually when I do one, just to come up with the 12, 12 things around the edge is enough for me to give me a sense of, okay, I feel some relief. I feel some hope. I feel some possibility. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm headed in the right direction. Right. And it, and the beautiful thing about is when it totally turns around a, an extremely stuck place I felt I was in, like a place of just feeling so bad about something and then i do a focus wheel and it's like it gives me a great sense of relief a great sense of possibility of like well this doesn't have to be so heavy duty you know like look at all these positive things i just wrote about about how this could unfold how this could develop and it inspires my belief that it is going to get better you know that things are going to unfold in a better way so they've been really successful for you that's a good thing yeah, I, I was going back and seeing after we did the one on Friday, like just sort of saw in some of my notebooks how often I had done a focus wheel when I was in a difficult place. I was mm. I was once trying to sell a house and um and I'd gone up for the open house of the house um so that I'd, I'd be there when all the different people would show up and it, and people weren't coming. So I sat in the living room, you know, of this empty house and and did a focus wheel. And it just got me in such a better place. Mm. And uh, people did show up. And nice. eventually I, I did sell that house. But it was, I was at a place of so much angst about it. Like, because I was running out of money and I was, you know, yeah. I was in a really bad situation. I had to sell that house. Right. Um, but the, but I remember thinking that was when I very first heard about focus wheels and I, about how much that focus wheel really changed that day for me. It changed that whole day because it took me out of this incredible fear I had that, that nobody was coming and how am I ever going to sell this? And I was weeks into trying to sell it. But once I started doing focus wheels, I got myself into a place of feeling that I'm going to, this is going to happen. I'm going to definitely sell this house. Everything's going to be fine. Well, we're, and down, it did. we're down to the last <laughs> few seconds. So uh, just before we go, how does somebody reach out to you in case they want more help with focus wheels? Um, they can go to my website called youarejoy.com. Y-O-U-A-R-E-J-O-Y dot com. And there's a free coaching session you can sign up for on my website. So if you'd like to work with me and see what it's like, contact me there. Sounds good. Tom, this has been great. Uh, I, I, my only sad thing is that we won't talk again till Friday, but, uh, you know, have a great I know. Week. Yeah, back. before it was like really <laughs> it soon. It needs to be Tuesday, but no more. Yeah. but uh, <laughs> So I look forward to talking to you on Friday. All right. Thanks, Walt. Okay. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.